coming to you from a wonderfully familiar place. The bathroom is not on my floor. I just moved it. I just moved it to a different part of the floor. I bring you a video that honestly I've wanted to make for a long time. Because whether you be, you know, going into a new youth group and you don't really know what's going on, or you're in your current youth group and just want to become the top of the hierarchy, something I've never been graced enough to accomplish, or whether you clicked on this video because you honestly wanted help, uh, I, I hope you learned about satire in middle school lit class. I have honed my expertise of going on 15 years, and I am here to share with you what I can in a way that will help you grow to be the top of the youth group pyramid. Because really, why else would you go to youth group? I've gathered that most youth groups are very cliquish and exclusive, and I'm here to help perpetuate that stereotype. And now here it comes at you, faster than your ability to run behind the youth building as soon as the prayer invitation ends to make out with your boo. Here are my quick, easy, simple ways to become the most popular member of your youth group simply by changing your own core values. First of all, let's get the obvious thing out of the way. You need to be bitter about everything. You know that stereotype from like older movies where the kids are like, LOL, too cool for any of this. Become that stereotype. Live. Breathe. Create that stereotype. You traveled back in time and started that stereotype. Little kids, ugh. Mission trips, ew. Altar calls, ew. Even the Christmas parties, ugh. Next, always have a beverage from something outside of the church. If you come into church drinking water, do you really want to succeed? In the most materialistic physical sense that you can possibly muster, this is now your status symbol. Whether it be an overpriced coffee or even an icy from the gas station that you pass on your way to church every Sunday morning, or the Sundays that you come anyway. Walking in three minutes late, hair a mess, with something in your hand that you sip on throughout the duration of service shows everyone that you don't give a flying kazoo. The coffee's good, so. Obvious choice, start drama. Lies, rumors, love triangles, a volleyball game where you strategically only hit people that don't go to your specific school system, anything. You just make sure you go out there and cause as much division in the body of Christ as you can, you sly dog. Next, always make sure you have your Apple brand earbuds within reach and within sight of the elderly churchgoers. Just to recap the beginning here, you are way too cool to actually be listening to sermons. The only inspiration you need is Biebs, and didn't Hosier write a song about a church once? And anyone who questions why you aren't listening to the sermon that you drove 20 minutes to be a part of, just tell them to shake it off. Now that we're starting with the earbuds, let's just go ahead and complete the look. You've gotta look the part. The Lord takes us all as we are, right? To keep your image going, anything above sweatpants is really pushing it. I mean, skinny jeans if it's like Easter or something. And sure, when you post on Instagram later today about your 3 p.m. date with Boo at McDonald's with your $30 eyeliner and four and a half hours that you spent curling your hair, that's fine. But really, the church members should just be glad you showed up wearing pants at all. The Bible says don't judge. Now that you look like you're meant to be here and act like it, you need to enjoy the love of God. I mean all of the love of God, not just the love from God. We're supposed to spread love, right? That's where significant others come in. I know my youth group is full of the love of the Lord because I can't walk 10 feet without finding two people loving each other enough to give each other CPR. And you're definitely going to be the youth member's favorite student because you always help us save seats during lessons by sitting in each other's laps. This next one seems obvious, but I feel like I need to say it anyway. Only show up when there's going to be free food or movie tickets. Because, I mean, duh. This next one allows you to be as creative as you want. Always dig down deep in yourself and find easy, meaningful, heartbreaking ways to use prayer request time as, you know, your own personal gossip corner. <laughs> in giving a prayer request for someone, especially in your school district or even a family member, always make sure to give their full name, their address, their age, their school, their boyfriend's name, their pets, how long they've been dealing with this, this stumbling block. And, and you know, they wouldn't have gotten into this if they hadn't have gone out with this guy and this guy and then done all
really. After all of that, I just... I just want what's best for... Insert first, middle, last name, and occupation. And finally, make sure you never, ever talk to anyone in the youth group other than your selected clique. If those people try to talk to you about church events or common interests that they're so sure you have based on the t-shirts you wear, which is crazy, you just wear these to look cool, just remember to keep blowing them off with a scoff and an eyebrow raise and pushing past them to get out the door to go make out with your significant other because there's no way that you're actually going to end up in one of their stupid YouTube videos. I mean, what's the odds of that happening? And above all, to maintain your image through the ages, make sure to stay salty, guys. <laughs> give you a break from this satirical writing to bring you a baby. <laughs>